Hi everybody, I'm Roz and I'm the artist behind North Mayo Fine Art. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw the very smooth skin on the dolphin. It's the kind of skin that you would find on dolphins, whales, porpoises, any sort of of the larger um, aquatic mammals that you would normally find. So I'm going to be starting from the nose and work my way backwards and just see how far we get. So the first thing I'd normally do when I'm starting a specific area of a drawing is I would um, erase a, a lot of the darker pencil marks. Not completely but just enough so that you can just about see them but they won't show up under the pencil. So I use a retractable a razor pen like this. I just find them much easier to use and uh, much easier to hold. You can get a variety of different ones. I just like these these cheap ones because the eraser is really good on them and you get an, an awful lot of eraser in each one. So I'm going to use this. So I'm just going to very gently erase the pencil marks so that you can hardly see them at all and you might not even be able to see them on the camera once I've erase them but I do it until I can just about still see them and just about still use them as a marker for where I need my coloured pencil to go. I just work my way around the nose they're nice and faint now. Now I also use for um, when I'm erasing pencil lines I use just this cheap uh, makeup brush just to dust just to dust over it and get rid of any of the little eraser marks and um, you can use any brush really this is a nice soft one and I find it really good because it doesn't damage the paper and it gets everything off so this is the one that I I just happen to use so I've taken a lot of the pencil off now so what I want to do at this stage is start adding some of the lightest colour. Now the reason I always go light to dark is because if I started with the dark colour the the nose area and the forehead are very very light in this particular piece. If I went in and did the dark colours first which would be more around this area and then I went and then did the light areas second I would probably go too dark too quickly and then I wouldn't be able to lighten it up again. So it's always a good idea to do the lightest areas first and then build up your darker sections. Because you can always make something darker but it's very, very difficult to lighten something up if you make it too dark. So I'm just going to start putting the first layer on the, the lightest areas. And for this particular piece... The actual very ends of both the noses on these dolphins are a very pale ivory, or almost white, almost a bright white. So I'm just putting a little tiny bit of ivory down first. Now you don't have to use ivory, you can use whichever co colour suits your piece best. And again, as I've said in, in all my previous videos, it's much better to use a light hand than to push down hard at the beginning. Because when you use a light hand, you can add a lot more layers than you can if you use a heavy hand early on. And I'm going in circular motions as always, because this skin is very, very soft and I wouldn't want to get pencil marks where the skin is because it would look completely out of place. The skin on a dolphin and the whale is so smooth. And for this piece we'll be doing a lot of blending to make sure we keep the very, very smooth, soft look. So 
but we're going to focus on the, the, the actual nose first. So I've finished adding the lightest colour. So I'm now going to get my blending tool. go in circular motions just blending that colour into the paper so it goes into all of the, the tooth all of the dips in the paper we want to have a really nice smooth coverage That's the first, the first layer down. So now the second layer, I'm going to come in and I'm actually using, for a majority of the dolphins, um, I'm going to be using warm grey from the Polychromos pencils. And that is purely because the colours work really nicely with the ivory in the white. So I'm going to start adding my first layer of the, the lightest of the warm greys. Now again you can choose whichever pencil you want, whichever colour, whichever brand. You don't have to use what I'm using. It's completely your own personal choice. I love Polychromos and also Prismacolor Premier pencils because they they work perfectly for my style of drawing. Now not everybody will like them, everybody's different. So I'm just starting to lay down the first layer of this colour and I'm using the long oval strokes. and start building the lower the lower jaw of the dolphin Come back and start building it up slowly on the top jaw as well and around the nose. I want to build the colour up slowly with even layers but very smooth layers. Now there are lots of different options when you're blending colour pencils, there's lots of different tools that you can use and there's lots of different ways that you can actually blend pencil out and I will be making a video very soon about different ways of blending pencil. The two most common ways of blending pencil would be a P 
paper blending stump and I actually have a video, um, I created a video a couple of years ago and I will put a card up with the link straight to that video how to make your own handmade blending stumps. The other option that I would use most often would be these. Now, this is called a silicone colour shaper and they were originally produced to be used with clay and sculpting but they've actually been fantastically received by artists as well and they are perfect for blending pencil. They've now become a very staple supply in an artist's studio or workspace. So I now would use these more than um, paper blending stumps. Still do use them, they definitely still have their uses but this is what I would use for a majority of my blending. And this is what I'm going to be using today. So I'm just going to go around now and I will blend this second layer. Now I'm not putting too much pressure on this, I'm still using a very light hand, I don't want to push it into the paper too hard that I damage the tooth of the paper. I'm just spreading it around the paper to get a very even, smooth coverage so that we can then start on layer three. I will put a link in the description for where you can actually purchase these colour shapers. Um, there are a few different suppliers, so I'll definitely put a link in the description for that because I think they're an incredible tool to use. So there's the second layer gone on. So now we want to build up that colour a little bit more, so I'm going to come back in. Now with the, the lightest shade of the warm grey, and again you can use any shade, any type of pencil, any colour of pencil for your particular piece. just going around this nose now and adding another layer of this colour down which I'll then add a, add a layer of a dark, slightly darker colour down on top of that. I actually uh, put a poll up yesterday if any of you are interested on the community section um, asking what you would like to see me draw in future tutorials. If there's any, anything specific that you would like to to learn or you, you would like me to make a video about. If you're interested, just pop over to the community page and answer the poll or leave a comment under the video and just say what you'd like to actually see me draw and give you hints and tips about. That's the, the next layer done. So I'm just going to very quickly blend that a little bit. Now you can see I'm holding, I'm actually holding uh, the brush or the shape quite high up the handle of it and that's because I don't want to push down too hard. I don't want to 
um, damage the teeth of the paper too soon because there's still a good few layers to add to this. So I'm just doing it very lightly for now. So I'm just going to brush over that. Just to make sure there's no no bits over the top of it. So I'm going to go on to the next, the next shade of this colour. And I'm going to start adding another slightly darker colour where the colour is actually building up on the reference photo. Now for anybody that's new to the channel, um, I have lots of different videos um, showing you how to draw lots of different things from fur to eyes to fabric, metal. So if you're interested in any of those, please pop over to my videos and you will find them all there. Something that I say regularly in my videos and I will keep saying it because um, I think it is extremely important is you need to be you need to be paying very close attention to your reference photo whatever the photo happens to be because if you if you are wanting to uh, draw an accurate representation of the, the reference material you are using you need to notice details in the photo. A lot of it is observation skills. I probably actually spend slightly more time actually looking at the reference photo than I do looking at my artwork when I'm creating it. Because I am making me sure that I am capturing every single detail. Now not everybody wants to, to recreate a photo and make it look photorealistic. And that's absolutely fine. Everybody has a different way of creating art and there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Everybody has their own ways of doing it and that is right for them. But the advice that I would definitely give to anybody wanting to create something that's a very close representation of a, of a photo or an image is to pay very close attention to the actual reference photo you're working from because if you don't, you will make mistakes and you won't capture all the detail that you want to in your artwork. So I'm just going over now with this colour. Just adding some of the slightly darker colour onto this nose. I'm building my way down towards the face. I've got most of this just 
that side down now. As I've said before in previous videos, if you've noticed, I turn my pencil, I rotate my pencil every minute or so. And that is simply just to keep my pencil sharper for longer. Because as I'm using the pencil, the, the section of pencil that's touching the paper is um, wearing down and starting to get blunt. But if I move my pencil 90 degrees every minute or so, that means that the pencil lead is wearing down evenly on, on, on for all four sides, if you like. And it actually keeps the point, the sharp point, sharper for longer. It means that you can you can colour with this pencil for longer than you would if you were only using one side, which actually reduces the number of times you need to sharpen your pencil so it extends the life of your pencil because the less you have to sharpen it, the less you're actually going to use. Another hint that I've got for you is that if your pencil starts to uh, dull down a little bit, you could get a piece of sandpaper or a nail file and you could actually just rub the side, the side of the pencil there. If you rub that on a piece of sandpaper, so just imagine my finger of sandpaper, if you rub it like this on the sandpaper and rotate it as you're rubbing it or rub it up the sandpaper like that, it will actually sharpen the end of the pencil um, so you don't have to use a, a complete sharpener and you're getting rid of a lot of the, the wood in the pencil and it's wearing down quite quickly. If you sharpen it like that every now and again, you're actually saving some of the pencil. So that's just another bit of a, a tip for you. And coloured pencils are quite expensive. Um, they're definitely not a cheap material or medium to use. Um, so if you can prolong the life of it even just a little bit, it's definitely worth doing that. Um, so that you're not spending out more than you need to. So I'm now just going to go over what I've done in this top section with the the ivory that I'm using again. And I'm doing this before I blend it out because I am going over the edges of the grey that I've put down. I'm going over the edges in a circular motion to try and soften the edges down so that they're not looking particularly sharp, but also to blend it into the colour behind it, which again is the ivory, which will give it a really nice soft look to it and will help to achieve this soft skin that we're, we're trying to draw. So, just going slightly over the edges of all the, all of the grey that I've added. Right up the edge here where the two sections of the mouth actually meet. Now I'm not coming right up to the end of the nose there because that actually is the brightest section. And if I put colour on there now it's going to be quite difficult to take it off again. Another tool that I want to show you that I find absolutely invaluable if I can get into it is um, my putty eraser. Now the reason I love my putty eraser is because you can mould it. This is what I'm talking about. And it's, it's a little bit like blue tack, but it's quite pliable and you can mould it to whatever shape you want really. Now I quite like having um, 
not a point as such. I'll show you now. I like to take a little bit off and just have a smaller section with me. And I actually shape it so it's almost like a cone. But it's thinner at this end than it is at that end. And I use I use this end here to dab on my work to lift some of the colour back up. So I'll actually go around just this section here where the lightest bit of skin is. But because it's not a harsh eraser that's got a very hard edge to it and a hard line. It's not erasing in a straight line. Because I'm dabbing it, it's actually taking off small bits of the pencil from each area. So it's actually leaving a really nice soft look to it, which is exactly the, the look we're going for. Now, please don't worry about it being a similar consistency to blue tack. It's not sticky. It won't damage your paper. It won't stick to the paper and then not come off again. If you can, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's it's very very lightly just picking colour up from the paper. So that noise is just it actually lifting from the paper again. So now we've uh, lightened that up a little bit, we are going to go straight back to adding colour. Um, I'm just going to very quickly blend the colour that we've just used. I'm going to blend it just a little bit because we want to make sure that each of these colours blend into each other perfectly. Now there's obviously with every object, whether it be in a person, an animal or whatever it happens to be, there's always going to be highlights and shadows. And in this case, the highlights are on the, the nose and the top of the head, which is where we're focusing on today. So I'm now going to move down to my next colour, which is slightly darker again. So I'm now going to start working on the areas where the darkest sections are and on this section of the face that we're working on the darkest sections are just above the top lip. So we're going to start adding colour there and again I'm using circular motions so that I'm not getting any harsh lines. I do apologise if you're getting sick of hearing me saying that, but it is so important. It's important to me that I give you all the hints and tips that I've picked up. And the most important hints and tips I will keep mentioning for anybody that's new. So I apologise if you've been with me for a while and you're hearing the, the same thing over and over again. So now we're adding the slightly darker shade. You can see the highlights and the shadows really coming together now. It's very important when drawing that it's not it's not the colour that's important. I know a lot of newer artists think it's very important to find out exactly what colour somebody's used to draw an image or, or, a, or whatever it happens to be. The colour isn't important, it's the, it's the shading, it's the depth, it's the tone. In order to, to have a drawing looking realistic, even if you're not, not looking to achieve photorealism, if you just want it to look recognisable as something, 
you need to concentrate on your shading and on your tone. And your darks have to be dark enough and your whites have to be light enough. And if you can if you can actually get your darks dark enough and then make sure your your lights are as light as they need to be in contrast to the dark, you'll always end up with a good drawing in the end. It's the values that you're wanting to achieve. Now, this whole section down here is the darkest section on the top, top of the, the mouth and the nose. Like I said, don't, it's always better to start lighter and work your way down to the darker tones. If you start too dark, it's very difficult to lighten it up. And you can use an eraser um, to lighten areas up and you can use putty eraser or you could even use blue tack if you didn't have a putty eraser. Before I uh, purchased a putty eraser, I used blue tack. Um, and that worked very nicely, but I always like to make sure I have the right materials for the job, and I wasn't 100% certain that the blue tack was completely safe to use on my drawing, so then I, I got myself a professional putty eraser, and I've always used that since. So that's the next layer gone down and I'm going to blend that out just a little bit and now I'm going to move on to the next layer so the next layer I'm actually going to add one of the darker shades now so that I can get the darkest area of this nose blocked in and then I know um, how dark it's going to be and then I can um, judge the rest of the, the shading and the highlights that I need to add. There are times where a, a straight line or even a curved line is needed rather than the seamless blending. And you can come back in with the, the circular motions. If anybody has any questions at all, please feel free to write them in the comments under this video or contact me privately. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that anybody's got. And just building my way down, working my way down to build up the colour. Right down my nose. And then I'm actually going to now at this stage darken this line up here, which is 
the line in between the upper and lower jaw because that is actually the darkest section of the mouth so we need to make sure this is dark enough and it comes to just about there and again I am constantly looking at the reference photo Now I'm using more pressure to do this line than I have done with the rest of it because this line is quite a bold line. It's the the gap in between the upper and lower jaw, so there is a very definite shadow there. Just building that up bit by bit. So now I'm going to come back to this section and I'm going to start adding the darker areas of the shading again. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. I'm putting slightly more pressure on than I was with the first couple of layers, but I'm definitely not pushing down to add this layer. I'm just ever so slightly increasing the control, working my way down the pencil to gain that little bit more control. Would any of you be interested in me creating a video that was specifically um, made with all the hints and tips specifically about the pencil and how to handle the pencil to get different looks, the different types of erasers that are out there, the different types of blending materials and how to use them. If any of you are interested in a video like that, please do let me know in the comments below because I've wanted to make one for a while and I'd be interesting I'd be interested to find out how many of you have to be interested in that. So I'm just going over again, moving slightly further down now towards that solid line. Now we've done that, I'm going to blend that a little bit, just to soften it up ever so slightly. I'm not going to blend that, that line underneath, because that has to be quite um, sharp. The rest of it can be blended a little bit, because we'll be adding more layers on top of that anyway. Now, I've actually gone a little bit too dark on one of the sections and I wanted to show you how um, how you can um, pick, some, pick up some of the colour. So again I'm using my putty eraser and I've made a nice point, not too pointed, there's still a good sort of thickness of the eraser there. And I'm going to hold the, the large section and I'm just going to dab like that. Can you see how it's actually picking up the pencil? And it's taking the pencil off with it. Which is exactly what I wanted. 
laying up on the side. Now, when your eraser picks up colour, the colour transfers onto the eraser. So every now and again, you just need to change its position and get a new clean piece out and then just keep dabbing it like that. And that way you'll have, you've got absolutely plenty of eraser to work with. And once it's actually been sort of almost melted into the eraser, um, it doesn't transfer back onto the back onto the drawing. Now I'm coming in with a slightly the, the slightly lighter shade again, just to go over the bit that I've I've just erased. Okay. I'm just going to come in again and just take off just a tiny bit of this darker. I'm going to come in with the light shade again. Like that. And then I'm going to carry on adding. in colour. I'm going to keep blending it to get the final look that I want. Now one thing that I want to mention is when you decide on a reference photo that you want to use um, and you've obviously either gained permission to use it from the original photographer or the owner of the photo or you get it from a copyright free reference site. Um, a lot of people just use the photo as it is. And they look at the photo and they want to reproduce it. Exactly as it is and exactly as they've received it. There are actually lots of different options. To be able to use the photos in different ways. If you have any software on your computer, uh, laptop, whatever you're using, you can actually edit some of the, the settings or some of the different looks of the photo. For example, changing the contrast so it looks so everything looks a bit um, bolder or sharing the brightness to either lighten it or darken it up a little bit. Subtle changes like that actually make a big difference to the photos. If you want to change the saturation you can make the colours much more muted or much bolder. Um, you can you can add text to it, you can add different um different shapes, different colours to it, you can completely alter the colours of the entire piece. There's an awful lot of different options out there for what you can do with a photo. So if you don't want to just if you like a photo but you think you want to actually um jazz it up a little bit if that's the word. There are lots of options out there and there's lots of different software you can use. Um, you can actually find free apps on the App Store, which is specifically designed to edit photos. Um, so just look for, if you're interested, just look for an app that's a, a photo editor. And most of them nowadays have very good um, options available for editing 
photos. So I am now just carrying on. And I want to just add a touch of this colour just up there like that. And there's a touch of it there. And now I'm going to go in with a lighter shade and I am going to blend a little bit of that out just with the pencils because you can actually just use the pencils to blend colours together or blend colours out. You don't have to use a blending tool, you can actually just use a different shade of the same colour blend it out that way like I'm doing here and because I'm still using the circular motions it means that everything is being blended seamlessly because there are no harsh lines from, from drawing backwards and forwards there's no visible lines to actually see so I'm now going to blend that out just a little bit more You can see it, that's really nice and soft. There's no harsh lines on it. You can't see the pencil strokes. It's just really nicely soft, very softly blended. And again, I'm just gonna come over with the brush and just brush away any tiny little bits that have been picked up on the, on the paper. So now just to add a little bit more brightness to this area. I'm actually going to just take a tiny bit of this colour off this area. And you can see that I'm using, I'm actually turning the eraser so that I can use different areas of different sides of this blending, this putty eraser. There seems to be quite a, a sharp line there, a light colour, and then just up here there is a very light spot just there. So now it's just a case of continuing to go around and adding the different colours. And get it looking exactly the way we want it to. Blend that again. Like that. And I want to just I want to actually make can you just see there I've actually made a sharp sort of flat end which I am going to use just to add a little bit of a highlight that's running along here. I'm 
and that actually hasn't gone as far as I'd like it to. So I'm going to get my eraser, my um, Tombow 100, which is a, a go-to eraser for any small little details that you want to highlight or erase. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm actually just going to come along in these little circular motions. Just add a little highlight there. See, it's very important when working with a reference photo to actually see even little things like like highlights and shadows because they're what actually make the piece come to life. And if you don't have the if you don't make the the brightest areas bright enough and the darkest areas dark enough, it's just not going to give you the look that you're after. So it's always worth taking the time to look at the reference photo. Now I think I need to add just a small bit of the lightest grey just up here just to blend it in. Now as you can see I'm holding the pencil very high up and that is because I don't want to add I don't want to put too much pressure on the pencil at all. I just want to add a very, very white layer. Just to the areas I can see on the reference photo. It just needs to darken up ever so slightly, but with hardly any colour, really. Like this. And then there's a tiny bit just here, right on the end of the nose, just there. Which, if I hadn't been looking at the reference photo very closely, I wouldn't have even seen. It's such a small detail, but it's a small detail that I've actually managed to notice just from looking at the reference photo. So again, I'm going to come in with my, my Tombow eraser and I'm just going to add a little highlight just going down there. And just bring it off the edge. There, like that. And then I'm going to come in with my second shade of the colour I'm using, just to add a tiny bit of pull there, and also just to add the detail of this line here. I don't want to keep the harsh pencil line, so I'm going to come in on this edge and just erase the pencil line before I go back over with this colour just to add this like that and I am now just going to continue to do exactly the same thing for the rest of the dolphins face and the body and I will I'll actually make another video showing you how to do the darkest areas which are, which are down the, at the very bottom of the dolphin and um, also some sp different textures that are just on the top of the dolphin's head. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also press the grey bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified every time I post a new video. 
Thanks for watching.